uh, I had this conversation with Anita mm -hmm. about do's and don'ts of, uh, of product development, basically. Mm -hmm. And we went through each stage of developing a product mm -hmm. and what things are good practice and what things are bad practice at each stage. At mm -hmm. each stage. Mm -hmm. But today, I'd like to talk with you about mistakes mm -hmm. <clears throat> that might be or may be avoided when designing a, a product. And I'm thinking about mistakes that you, with your 15 years of experience, mm -hmm. um, uh, have seen and probably see over and over with some clients, especially the less experienced clients, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that simply could be avoided and would help designing a product. So for someone who's new to developing a product, uh, mm, what mistakes uh, happen often mm -hmm. and maybe how to avoid them from the very beginning, beginning. of the yeah. process? Mm. I think uh, that many mistakes are related to planning the product itself and planning the project. As, you mean as just the, the initial concept? Yes, uh, because uh, starting from the very basics, um, when, uh, when someone um, has an idea for a product, he starts planning um, the functionality of the product. Sometimes um, he or she is so engaged in this process that uh, he forgets to, to do um, his homework and, for instance, checking the market, doing the market research, okay. uh, doing uh, comparative research uh, and checking the competition, if there is any. Because uh, we often uh, talk to clients who try to develop uh, uh, a bread of butter <laughs> or, yeah. or invent the wheel for the second Yeah, so uh, uh, really uh, uh, people come to, uh, come to you and say, they, hey, I have this idea for a product and you just Google it and show them, hey. Um, uh, I mean, it's okay to release, like, you know, it's yeah, not like only one company makes smartphones, Definitely, right? definitely. But, uh, and uh, obviously this is often the case because... Uh, um, on very few occasions, uh, um, there are products which are so innovative, innovative that uh, that uh, there is actually no competition in the market. But in most cases, those are pro products which already exist in the market in one form or the other. Uh, but uh, very often, a client is uh, so focused on his project or uh, or this this is going to be too, this is going to be so exceptional that he or she forgets to, okay. to check if uh, there is indeed something like this already exists and maybe it's not the best idea to develop this. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, so not only doing the research in terms of, um, well, comparative research, but doing the research around the project itself. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, doing market research, checking, uh, doing maybe uh, market analysis, uh, whether um, there is actual need for such product, whether uh, there are customers or whether there is a market for such product. Because we've had cases where the product was so ahead of its time that uh, at, uh, when the product was ready, our clients had really a very serious problem of proper, properly marketing uh, their product uh, okay. because uh, it was so ahead of its time and uh, uh, people had hard times understanding uh, the functionality or, or okay. the potential okay. of, of the of the product uh, so. that's that, that's also a big problem with uh, digital products i believe like yes. uh, the world of startups is full of uh, products solving problems that don't need solving or don't exist <laughs> yeah <laughs> on a bigger scale first world yeah problems. first world problems so called yeah true so i would say that uh, another uh, mistake or maybe uh, yeah, a mistake when planning a product is um, thinking or overthinking the functionality of the pro product mm. because uh, mm, sometimes of course uh, we know this very well you want uh, your product to be best of the best yeah. and you want uh, you want your product to stand out from the rest which is in the market mm -hmm. Uh, but um, very often, the, um, let's say there, is, there are functionality which you can categorize as uh, absolutely 
uh, required or mm -hmm. must have, let's say, or, but there is also something which can be optional okay. or which should be optional. So don't force the optional things into the first version of the product or maybe think about the functionality that you can get rid of because uh, it may happen that developing such functionality uh, would um, well, uh, influence uh, the time frame of, mm. of developing the product itself. And of course, if it takes longer, then it, it is more expensive to introduce as well. I don't know why, but uh, uh, another comparison to the uh, uh, digital world mm -hmm. comes to mind when uh, you have uh, a product launch and there's, uh, it's usually called, for example, version 1.0, and yes. then you have version 2.0, 3.0, 1.2, 1.5. So what you're saying is, don't start with version 5.0 or something yes. like that. So, <laughs> start with the basic first iteration. We call this uh, curse of uh, 2.0 version. Curse of 2.0. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that sounds like it. Uh, yeah, a because good description. Uh, uh, it happened a lot of times. Okay. And uh, I so just packing too many features into the first stage of develop developing the product. That's right, and uh, not thinking about alternative ways of introducing the product to the market. Maybe you don't need uh, 2.0 functionality in the first, uh, let's say, one or two years. Maybe it's good to think about a scenario where a product is developed with its basic functionality and it, it already can start generating some revenue. So it's sort of like a more of a down-to-earth approach to the business of the yes. product itself. Yes. So maybe first go try to talk with other business owners in this or a similar industry and see how the product's life cycle looks. Because probably yes. the version 2.0 is not something that you decide on, but something that's built on your users' feedback. So coming up with it before you have any users that's is right. not necessarily the best idea. Uh, yeah, and uh, developing um highly uh, complicated product, uh, I don't know, versus developing a, a basic functionality uh, product, it may, be, it may take twice the time needed for introducing this product to the market in its basic form. And imagine that uh, working, uh, well, you imagine the situation where when you are developing a product for, I don't know, two or three years, and uh, you're delivering the 2.0 version, which is already obsolete because uh, well, uh, the competition was uh, mm. developing something uh, iterationally or uh, yeah. they, they tried to introduce different variants of the same product. Well, and sometimes being first to market is very important. That's right. And uh, so maybe I'm not saying it's always uh, a good practice because certain pro products simply require yeah. um, complex functionality. But, uh, well, take this into account when planning um, um, the actual functionality sure. and uh, think about what is the critical functionality and what might be the optional functionality. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Well, uh, I assume everything we will be talking about and are talking about, mm -hmm. we need to generalize a bit, right? So there yeah. were sometimes, or maybe even always, there, there will be exceptions or specific industries or types of products where those uh, mistakes you have uh, seen clients make uh, simply won't apply. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I have in mind uh, one of the projects that we uh, worked on and uh, it was a project which was kickstarted mm -hmm. and uh, it was kickstarted and uh, advertised as um, well fully, fully fun functional uh, device which our client uh, came to us uh, with. It was a litter box for cats. And um, the initial functionality was really, uh, well, um, it was a dream come true for a cat owner. Yeah. And um, of course, the development, the development process took, uh, took some time. And um, what changed was actually, uh, well, the market changed in the, in the meantime. So by the time that the product was ready to, to go for tooling and to start ordering the parts, for the for the hardware, it turned out that um, the prices of the components went up so high okay. from uh, uh, from in comparison to to to, to the situation in the market a uh, couple of years ago mm -hmm. that our client had to and was forced to 
uh, revise the functionality of the device because they would not be able to meet um, the advertised price of the product and they had to cut out uh, more than half of the initial functionality that uh, uh, that they planned uh, yeah. before. And probably if they started with a simple product, they maybe could generate some revenue and cash flow to develop the product more steadily. And that's right. Yeah. And but uh, that, that's that boils down to uh, budgeting, which probably also has its own mm -hmm. uh, issues. So yes, it's uh, it's really hard to to plan. A good budget for um, for a hardware product because uh, very often if you have no experience doing this uh, certain things may be overlooked and uh, I think that uh, even experienced people uh, have might have problems with planning simply because uh, imagine a situation when someone comes to you and asks how much does building a house cost mm -hmm. and <laughs> The answer is, I don't know, because yeah. we don't know what we're actually going to. Yeah, <laughs> you made how big house yeah. Yeah. or how many uh, um, bedrooms or, yeah. or anything. So, so this is the similar case with, uh, with uh, each product. If someone comes and say, OK, how much does, I don't know, a phone cost or something. So products which already exist in the market are easier to calculate. But the, the situation can get complicated pretty quickly because even adding certain functionality like, I don't know, waterproof ceiling may drastically increase the, mm. uh, the time needed for developing and for testing such products. So I would say that uh, even for experienced uh, people planning the budget is, is hard. And I would say that um, it's always good to, to, to prepare a safety margin uh, for such uh, project, mm -hmm. and uh, because it's simply responsible, uh, it's wishful thinking uh, to to assume a certain budget, and uh, don't and not anticipating uh, problems along the way uh, during the development process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and developing the product is one thing you need to of course consider after you develop it you still need to manufacture it yes. market it uh, get it to the stores or wherever so there's a whole other side to budgeting that's right because uh, this is only half of the story developing the product is um, I don't know may take a hundred thousand US dollars and then uh, tooling for this uh, project might cost ten thousand more uh, sorry ten times uh, this yeah. amount and you still have to keep in mind that you need to, um, well, let the world know about keep your the product. production line going. You need to market it. Yeah, that's right. So, of course, uh, introducing a product or, or planning the budget is not just planning the development budget. Yeah, but someone who probably plans for such a product must have some experience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's impossible, I think, to start with such a big project uh, mm -hmm. when it's your first product. Uh, Probably in these times, like you've mentioned before, mm -hmm. people who are developing their first product are looking for to, to, to crowdfund uh, the production or maybe look for investors before going to mass production. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's a whole different story. Uh, from my experience, when budgeting is a uh, problem, mm -hmm. you might say, then usually um, timing also is like any sort of deadlines or planning a time schedule for yes. project release? So I think uh, the biggest issue uh, with, um, with the time uh, planning is actually not anticipating that certain types of products might require um, various prototyping and uh, various iteration of development. And especially I'm thinking of, um, about products which are mechanically complicated, mm -hmm. um, which um, would indeed require a certain technology to, to, in order to prototype a, a specific solution to test it, because um, designing is just part of the process and then testing and reviewing uh, the thing that you designed is, is another process. And I remember to, talking to a client once 
uh, when we gave them a time frame just for a revision stage, mm -hmm. and they were surprised why uh, why it, um, why we anticipated that a single revision for a relatively small product might take about eight weeks. Yeah, and there was actually only one week of our work, and the the remaining weeks were simply time needed for prototyping and for uh, preparing a documentation for uh, manufacturing the prototype. And then assembling the product and then doing tests and, uh, well, thinking about uh, what, uh, whether analyzing the test mm -hmm. results and thinking about the, uh, planning the next revision. Yeah. So uh, the actual scope, uh, the actual designing work was relatively short, but uh, the client did not anticipate that the tests needed, uh, the feedback uh, from the pr prototype testing is something that also uh, requires time. Um, yeah, so probably uh, my guess would be uh, if I were thinking about developing a product mm -hmm. and I would want to contact a, a company like ours, mm -hmm. I think the first thing I would do is just call them and say, hey, I'm thinking about a product, but I'm not yet ready to come to you with a brief, mm -hmm. but I would like to know about the process and mm -hmm. how it looks and what I actually should be preparing for. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, not, not, not in terms of consulting or workshops, but just even a 10-minute talk about what you just said mm -hmm. could probably save me a lot of thinking and a lot of bad planning. Yes. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. And even some people who have no experience in introducing any types of products uh, in, in the market uh, might simply not be aware of, uh, of the... Uh, of different stages related yeah. to, to introducing a product um, to the market. Uh, Im imagine, uh, well, people offer, often imagine that uh, once um, uh, the manufacturing documentation is ready, they can mm -hmm. already start manufacturing and yeah. this is just a matter of months before... Yeah, I just place an order. Yes, yeah, yeah. and no, it's not. And uh, we often discuss it with our clients. If, if you plan for, I don't know, uh, executing uh, tooling for mass production or plastic injection. Then uh, we had a case where one of our clients was looking for a manufacturer for over three months and then it took them another six months to negotiate the deal uh, yeah. with the manufacturer. So that was nine months of actually... Of just talking of, with the manufacturer. That's right. And I have numerous examples of projects which we finished, I don't know, five years ago or, or six years ago. And it took, uh, I don't know, another three or four years before they actually hit the shelves because the manufacturing process was uh, either so complicated or there were uh, issues related with, uh, with unforeseen um, events which took place uh, yeah. along the way. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's like... Mm. It seems weird, uh, maybe, well, maybe not weird, mm -hmm. but it's interesting mm -hmm. that sometimes a design that you make mm -hmm. uh, or that you made, for example, like you said, five years ago or mm -hmm. six years ago, mm -hmm. only comes to market now or, or recently mm -hmm. is shown to the people. And uh, like one of our clients, uh, for example, uh, you get a, uh, an award Mm -hmm. for it for the design like we received the red dot award or mm -hmm. the if award for a design that we made five or six years ago yes yes and uh, that was a medical product and uh, again uh, the manufacturing process was very complicated uh, but the issue that influenced uh, the well that caused the actual delay was um, uh, actually selecting the manufacturer which turned out to be uh, very unprofessional and uh, the first the first tooling was botched totally mm -hmm. botched and okay. uh, the actual t uh, tooling manufacturing process has to be had to be restarted with a new company okay. so that caused a terrible delay in this project and moreover once the product was ready that was a medical device which mm -hmm. which required uh, testing and uh, required uh, certain certifications to to be uh, to be delivered before actually uh, the product was uh, allowed possible. to the market. That's yeah. right. Be before the product was allowed to the market, and that was also something which uh, which caused uh, another delay. And uh, 
yes, it's very hard to, to plan just um, or, or even, uh, well, draft um, a, a good and reliable time frame because you need to take um, various risk factors uh, which are not always known. But uh, even talking to us as, as people who, who participated in various projects and uh, who participated also in the manufacturing process with our, and assisted our clients during, um, during the manufacturing, uh, we do have certain ideas uh, where there are um, the, the, let's say, showstoppers uh, along the way um, uh, when it is good to plan to, to add more time to the, mm. um, to the actual uh, plan that might be, uh, that has to be presented to, I don't know, to board members or something. So it's always, it's always good to ask someone who already um, uh, went well, through it. Went through it, that's right, and, uh, and has uh, more experience and, and perhaps can, uh, um, I don't know, indicate some other areas that have to be, uh, uh, well, taken into account. Uh, it sounds to me like uh, when introducing a new product, whatever time schedule you're planning, make it longer. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I, I think to some extent, that's the reason we do this whole podcast. It's mm -hmm. because we talk about these things, like you said, problems with manufacturers, with, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the, the development process. A lot of the stuff that you are mentioning are also mentioned in other uh, talks we have here, mm -hmm. and they could help people who plan on introducing a new product really um, have a more successful and at the same time less stressful experience. Definitely so, because hardware is hard. And hardware is hard, yeah, I like, I like that. Yeah, and uh, it's a fact. And uh, if anyone claims otherwise, uh, he has not developed uh, any product. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, unless you have really uh, experienced team all over, uh, um, I don't know, in, in, inside uh, your company and uh, which is experienced in all uh, various stages of the process. Mm -hmm. So develop, uh, development, uh, manufacturing, um, certification, all kinds of things, then uh, just uh, the, the logistics of such, of uh, Projects which uh, which I don't know are not simple products, but uh, have some kind of um, electronic hardware inside. Mm -hmm. is complicated, and uh, this is this is the reason why um, the budgets for uh, developing uh, products are not small. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, part of our let's say mission is also to educate people to give them a better insight into um, what the actual um, development process looks like. Mm -hmm. Because uh, very often uh, when a client, uh, a less experienced client comes to us, he has um, a vague idea on, on what the actual process looks like. He has certain expectations, maybe, a, I don't know, a blurred vision of what it might look like, but the actual uh, process is often very uh, much more complicated yeah. than than, uh, than the initial ideas, and we've had many discussions uh, after um, uh, finished products with our clients who who claim, "Oh man, if I if I knew if I only knew yeah, it would be so I, complicated." Yeah, if I knew then what I know now. Yes. Um. You you mentioned uh, I I love the the phrase that hardware is hard, but. Mm -hmm. That's why during developing uh, physical products, you need to rely on the prototyping process, right? Yes. I assume you could point out a few uh, common mistakes people make there also. So, uh, yes, certain types of products require uh, prototyping. Uh, prototyping is, uh, is, uh, is basically a key key component of uh, every design process. Uh, of course, if you design a single part, uh, I don't know, a, a metal plate that would be um, distancing something, this is, the, the first prototype might be the last one, but, yeah. but you have to test it uh, at certain so, stage of the product, yeah, uh, of, of the development uh, mm -hmm. of the product. And uh, 
for more complicated products, uh, it's simply uh, you simply need to be aware that uh, multiple iterations of uh, of, uh, of prototype might be needed, and. Uh, I think this is also uh, a part uh, which is overlooked by um, people who plan uh, such uh, uh, projects because um, they are I they either assume that less prototypes would be needed or they assume uh, or they reserve uh, too little money for the prototypes mm -hmm. and uh, it's very hard to to give a uh, I don't know a clear l rule for uh, for um, doing such assumptions, but um, from our past experiences, I would say that um, products uh, which were consumer electronics related, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the healthy amount reserved for, uh, for, for actual prototyping and testing um, during the development stage was about um, a third of the uh, total cost of the total cost of the design process okay. itself. So keep that in mind and uh, don't forget about uh, taking prototyping into account and yeah. uh, always assume that more prototypes might be needed than uh, they're actually um, well that you plan because mm -hmm. we've even had cases where a client uh, along the way decided that they need not one prototype but they need um, four pieces because they needed to distribute the prototype okay. in, in four different uh, areas of the world uh, to gather uh, healthy feedback uh, mm -hmm. from, from the testing. So this is, uh, this is also uh, something which has to be uh, remembered when, when planning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after, because uh, you mentioned uh, electronics at some point, after you even are finished with the design process with the development process mm -hmm. so you need to get certifications sometimes way more um, uh, difficult or expensive ones to get than just the basic electronic stuff yes if you want to introduce any uh, product uh, to the market which has uh, electronic parts inside uh, whether this is something very simple or uh, whether this is a smartphone or, or something very simple as, I don't know, a Bluetooth button or something like this, you need to remember that such projects, uh, that such hardware has to be certified before you deliver this to the market. Of course, there are certain workarounds that can be uh, used for speeding up such process, mm -hmm. but you cannot skip it completely. Yeah. Um, I remember... Uh, 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 when talking with Anita about mm -hmm. uh, uh, visual concepts, mm -hmm. so something uh, that's at the almost very beginning of developing a, a new product, mm -hmm. uh, before we get to prototyping, mm -hmm. before we even think about uh, choosing a vendor or yes. whatever. Um, these often, uh, because they're the first very tangible thing that a, a client sees, they sometimes invoke quite the emotional reaction and mm -hmm. a very strong attachment yes. to the visuals, right? Yes. So what, what sort of mistakes you have seen people make uh, uh, after, you know, taking a, a design, a visual and yes. being like, oh, this is it. Yeah. So um, I see a few uh, because one of the mistakes is thinking that, wow, this is already, uh, I, I already see this uh, in the screen. Yeah. So it's just a matter of, I don't know, months yeah. before I see it on the shelf. Yeah, so two weeks and it's ready. No. <laughs> as, I, as I told you, it sometimes may take years from the actual uh, product visualization to, to, the, uh, to the shelf, to, to, well, putting the product uh, in the shelf. So. Yeah. Don't assume that after seeing uh, the the visuals, then it's going to get uh, easier. And this yeah. is that the hard work is done. No, the hard work is far from uh, done. So sure. this is one of the mistakes. But uh, also, uh, I would say maybe not uh, not as much with with the concepts that we generate here at Mind Sailors because we try to think about uh, how the projects products will be constructed and. Mm -hmm. 
we always try to deliver concepts uh, which are uh, realistic in terms of um, actual technology, actual parts, uh, separate parts, um, splitting uh, the, the product into uh, manufacturable parts and, and shapes. Uh, but sometimes we get clients who come to us with, um, uh, with a concept of their own uh, or even a printed uh, prototype. Mm -hmm. And um, they also assume this is just a matter of weeks before uh, transferring this to uh, documentation and uh, before being able to, to execute this. But it's not often uh, like yeah. as simple as that because uh, we always review such projects and uh, very often, especially if uh, a less experienced designer worked on such pro project, it turns out that uh, the parts are, uh, well, technically not possible impossible to, to make. Yeah, you can, yeah. sure, you can print this uh, on your 3D printer. Yeah, but that's not for mass production. That's right. But yeah, and transferring something uh, which is done on a 3D printer to a mass production uh, might be a very time-consuming process as well. And we've had cases like that uh, before. Uh, I think I mentioned on, on one of our earlier talks of projects, which uh, I, I don't remember, there were 15 parts of which only mm. one was uh, possible to be actually uh, injected yeah. uh, uh, with plastic. And uh, the other parts were totally, required total, re total redesign in terms of uh, the shape. How... Uh how can I, um, okay, this example that you have uh, just said when someone who had no idea about the manufacturing process designed something mm -hmm. that he didn't even know or mm -hmm. she, that it was so uh, unmanufacturable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's a mistake of a, a single person. Mm -hmm. But um, when uh, the process of development can span over so many months or mm -hmm. years, uh, often many people mm -hmm. throughout the lifespan of the development process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. many people might be involved in it or leading it mm -hmm. or gathering feedback or, or, or whatever. I see yes. also that this probably is quite the source of some mistakes. Yes, because... Um... This could be class, uh, classified as a um, communication problem because um, uh, in my experience, uh, the worst possible projects or the worst possible scenario in working on a project for a client is when there is no single person responsible for um, accepting uh, or communicating the, um, uh, the feedback. You mean like there's no, 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 not someone who's like leading the vision, the vision, it's... Uh, there's not, there's, there may be a few people, there may be a few managers working on the same uh, projects. And we've had cases where the decision making team uh, was, um, I think, uh, um, three or four um, mm -hmm. person team. And uh, it was really a problem for them to to create a comprehensive feedback for us, which was, uh, which would not uh, be self-contradictory. Okay. Because uh, so no one was leading the, the, the process sort of. They that's were... right. And we often got uh, a feedback, which one person wanted to do a change uh, in this direction. The other person wanted to pull uh, to, well, to, to cancel that uh, yeah. request and yeah. to introduce something uh, of their own. And that's cool. why it's, uh, it's always nice to have uh, one uh, clear uh, leader in terms of uh, leading such project uh, because it simplifies the communication process and uh, it speeds up basically the development yeah, so process. Too many cooks, yes. well, like the saying goes. That's right. And uh, also keep in mind that uh, there's something like project specification and uh, remember that uh, we will stick to it because this is a uh, uh, holy Bible for us uh, oh. in terms of what actually has to be delivered mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. what actually has to be done. So we try to, uh, to, to, to stick uh, to it. And uh, of course, uh, we need to be flexible. So uh, if a client comes and, and he, if the decision-making team is uh, more than one person, then of course we'll try to, uh, to 
to, to I don't know to to try to work uh, as good as we can with uh, such team and uh, we do have good experiences in such processes as well but uh, it's not always the case so yeah. keep in mind that it's simple uh, it's simpler to have a, a single person responsible if not for a whole project but maybe just for a stage of the project so that might be a potential solution for that. yeah in my experience it's also often a mistake when it comes to managing a project mm -hmm. and for example keeping up with deadlines mm -hmm. when it, it happens in every business mm -hmm. uh, when a project manager even if it does have a single leader or manager or however you would call it mm -hmm. um, they plan that they need to uh, keep us in check for the deadlines, mm -hmm. but often they forget to consider that on their side, mm -hmm. inside their organization, mm -hmm. there might be some unforeseen uh, problems, like, I don't know, someone who needs to green light this decision will yes. be on va vacation yes. or will be on medical leave or and maternity leave or whatever. And that happens very often, yes. And, uh, well, those... And, uh, yeah, just be uh, keep in mind that if uh, if uh, if you plan a project then also plan uh, the delays not only on uh, on the side of the contractor which in now in this case would be us but also uh, on your end because someone might get sick some uh, decision making person we had a case where uh, a manager uh, uh, was pregnant and she was not able to participate in yeah. the development process and the whole process was severely uh, delayed by months due to the um, health problems and uh, this is something that may happen so have realistic expectations in terms of um, making the timeline flexible in such cases because the worst thing that can happen is giving us I don't know feedback just before the last day uh, yeah. of the yeah, of the deadline and expecting that we will be able to uh, hurry butter it that's right <laughs> just by one click of the mouse deliver uh, generate a revised product <laughs> that's true so always keep that in mind with project management management uh, developing a new product in, in general i assume that these problems are more related to large companies than to small companies? Mm, it's not always the case because the size of the company doesn't really matter. If, because even we know startup companies who had um, professional uh, and experienced uh, people working on various positions and people who had also experienced with uh, uh, who were also experienced with introducing different products to the market. They simply uh, they, they simply knew the process and uh, knew what potential issues might uh, uh, come out along the way. And on the other hand, we had large corporate customers uh, who often lack uh, experience in certain areas. And uh, we also had cases where a project manager um, from a large company mm -hmm. uh, had literally no experience at all in, in hardware projects okay. and that was uh, something that we had to also be prepared for. So um, it's not always the size of the company but it's people who, who basically uh, drive the company and that mm. matters. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure, sure. Anything else comes to mind we could talk about? I think that we addressed most of the issues. Yeah, we covered, uh, we covered quite a lot, right? Yeah. Um, to sum up, um, developing a product or researching the product is extremely complicated yes. and time-consuming. Yes. And when something is complicated and time-consuming involves many people and many physical aspects, logistical aspects, you should be aware that there's a lot of preparation uh, need, needs to be in place simply to make a reasonable mm -hmm. and actionable plan yes. for the product development to be a success. So uh, there's a lot more to it than people with little experience might uh, expect. Mm -hmm. And probably before getting fixated on an idea for a product, 
it's best to maybe just call and consult yeah. uh, to um, see what you don't know. That's right. Don't uh, don't assume. Ask and do your homework. <laughs> don't assume. Ask and do your homework. Yes, yeah, that's that's a good summary. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the talk, and I, I hope to. Uh, we have another one in a minute. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the talk.